Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome. We are here coming to you live from Fellowship Church of White Plains, Maryland. Marvin Harris is the pastor, and Bill Heath will be speaking tonight. And uh, we just thank God for everybody that's here and everybody that's out online. And uh, if you're able to join us sometime, we do have uh, we've got some pizza going on in the back, and uh, it's just a good good time of fellowship before the service. And then we get to enjoy some worship and some prayer and um, listen to the word. Amen. Have a good word. So. God, we just give you all the glory tonight. Father, I ask you to to cover us all uh, with the blood of Jesus, Lord. And thank you for that blood that covers sin. Thank you for that blood that that broke the curse. Because Jesus became a curse for us so that we would not be under the curse of the law of not being able to fulfill all of God's requirements. Oh, thank you, Lord. Father, I just pray tonight you would reveal to us your great mercy and your wonderful goodness tonight, Father. And we give you all the glory, Lord. You are so worthy of our praise. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right. Bless the Lord. All right. My mic stand there. All right. Glory, glory in the highest glory. And to the Almighty, glory to the Lamb of God. And glory to the living word. I give glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory in the highest glory. To the Almighty, glory to the Lamb of God. I give glory to the living Word. I give glory to the Lamb. I give glory. Glory, all of the glory, glory, I give glory, glory to the Lamb, I give glory, glory, all of the glory, glory, I give glory, glory to the Lamb, I give glory to the Lamb. God is worthy of our praise. Amen. And praises. Praises, praises in the highest. Praises, praises to the Almighty. Praises, praises to the Lamb of God. I give praises, praises to the living word. I give praises to the Lamb. I give praises. Praises. All of the praises. I give praises and praises to the Lamb. Oh, I give praises, praises, all of the praises, praises. I give praises, praises to the Lamb. I give praises to the Lamb. Honor, honor in the highest honor, to the Almighty, honor to the Lamb of God, honor to the living Word, I give honor to the Lamb. Say again, honor, give all your honor to Him. Honor, honor in the highest honor. To the Almighty, honor to the Lamb of God. I give honor to the living Word. I give honor to the Lamb. I give honor, honor, all of the honor, honor 
I give honor, honor to the Lamb. No, I give honor, honor, all of the honor, honor. I give honor, honor to the Lamb. I give glory, I give glory, glory, all of the glory, glory. I give glory. Glory to the Lamb. Oh, I give praises. I give praises. Praises. I give praises. Praises. I give praises. Praises to the Lamb. I give all my praises to the Lamb. I give all my honor to the Lamb. I give all the glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. You can lift up a clap offering to the Lord or just say amen or bless the Lord. We give you all the glory right now, Father. You are worthy of all praise. Amen. 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 Enthroned between the cherubim, God of glory, so full of glory, reigning in the highest place, you come low to dwell with the lowly. Tell me who is like our God. Great is God most high, the sovereign King, Lord of eternity. Glory to the highest Lord. From ages past, who was and is and will be, you and you alone, only you, God, pour grace down from your throne, from your seat of mercy. You show goodness to all your works, giving life and every good thing. And when we sin, you gave your only Son to draw us near and make us holy. Who oh, tell me who is like our God? Great is God most high, the sovereign King, the Lord of eternity. All glory to the highest Lord from ages past. Who was and is and will be You and you alone Pour grace down from your throne From your seat of mercy From your seat of mercy Great is God most high, 
the sovereign king, the Lord of eternity. All glory to the highest Lord from ages past, who was and is and will be. Who is like? Tell me who is like? Yes, who is like? Tell me who is like? Who is like our God? Great is God, most high. The Sovereign King, Lord of Eternity. Glory to the highest Lord from ages past, who was and is and will be. You and you alone, you alone, God, pour grace down from your throne, from your seat of mercy. Amen. Amen. That place that you reign from, God, it is your seat of mercy. It is your seat of mercy. Bless the Lord. So I, it's occurring to me, I've been singing a lot and talking a lot about the mercy of the Lord and I, lately, and I just, uh, God's bringing me through some things. I'm just so impacted by his mercy lately, and, and I want to thank God for it, and I know a lot of you out there feel the same, amen? Amen. amen. And, and the truth is, when we get saved, when we come to the Lord, we don't understand the depth of his mercy. Isn't that right, brother? Until we begin to understand the depth of our own iniquity in our hearts. And, uh, but you are so great, God, and your mercy is so great. Psalm 103 says this, As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the Lord's compassion for us. And as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us. And we just, we thank you, Lord, tonight. Amen. And uh, Pastor, are you up for prayer? Okay, yeah, so Pastor Marmon's going to come up and uh, lead us in a, you got to come up, <laughs> lead us in a word of prayer. <laughs> you ready? Okay, yes, yeah, so Pastor Marmon's going to come up now and lead us in a word of prayer. And uh, thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Father Philip, good to see you. Good to see you. Are you up to the Yes. Is the teacher? All right, we have Phil going to teach uh, us a lesson next week on finances, and uh, I'm excited about that, and uh, we have a lot of people on our prayer list, and I want to say thank you, Jim, and thank you, Rachel. That was a real blessing. Great songs. And Jim Bice, uh, Jim, can you hear me now? We're going to look at these prayer lists, and then I've written a new rap song. Uh, it's going to be published next week. <laughs> so let's look here. Myron, uh, our prayer warrior on Wednesday night, him and Sherry both have uh, the virus, so we're going to pray for them, Lord Jesus, uh, for uh, his Aunt Shirley, for the Newman family, the Pickerel family, the Hawkins families, for Matthew Knight, praying for him. Also, Garnett Anderson, Richard Reynolds, Cheryl and Angelo Farrar, Bill Heath seems to be doing very well, uh, uh, Michael Turley, Chloe Saul, uh, by the way I understand doing real well, graduated from uh, some classes she's been taking and uh, doing real well. Lord, we thank you for that. Mike Morris, Ken and Lorraine Mahan. Ella Mason and Evan, uh, Lydia Witten, Michelle Brunel, Fred Miller, Betty Stepp, 
uh, praying for uh, Jimmy Ryan, Dan Duty, uh, Billy Laracy and his daughter, uh, Tommy Harris and his family, uh, Sherry Greenhow, uh, again, uh, Myron's wife. Also for Brenda Greer, again, Charles and the Newman family. Uh, Ed and Debbie, I've been talking to Ed many times. He had a brain bleed, and uh, they think it was from, I believe, a stroke. Uh, he's, uh, he's doing well. They're transferring him. They've transferred him from Richmond down to Washington, D.C. to a rehab, but he wants to come home, so pray for him. Danny and Carolyn McKinney, we're praying for them. For Roy and Debbie, for uh, Jim Bowie, uh, Kimberly Harris, uh, for uh, Jim Heath, Bill's dad, Paul Fitchner, I understand doing better. Uh, also, uh, Zoe Strong, uh, Rachel uh, Ashley uh, Enstrom and Aiden, John and Rose Burnham, Lorraine Beringer, we're praying for her tonight. Also, Aiden Sweeney, and uh, also uh, Joe, Joey and Mary. Also, uh, uh, Bob Wynn. Uh, Rick Houston with the COVID. Um, Pinky, Donna's sister's daughter uh, with heart and lung problems in the hospital. Bill Latimer, one of our uh, uh, fine uh, men at the church uh, with COVID, praying for him. Also uh, praying for a praise of my great-grandson, uh, RJ, uh, who had a rash everywhere, is uh, doing real well now. So that's a blessing. Larissa, also the Kocheski family, my wife Donna, uh, Christy Crown and her family, and uh, Marissa. Also Dory Hardesty, my wife's sister, who broke both shoulders, and Donna is with her now, and we're encouraged by her improvement. She couldn't walk at all at the beginning, but she is walking a little bit now, praise God. Uh, Ginger and A.J. Conigan and family, Harry and Roxanne uh, Berger, Mike Winston, also for Julie uh, Burgess, Robert Pickle, um, uh, Dale Hayes, um, also for Butch Lysinger, Frank Adgate and his son and family. He's been drug-free for four years. That's a blessing. Uh, Myron's, uh, again, Aunt Shirley. Uh, I understand she's been in the hospital with COVID for over a year, and she's lost over 100 pounds. Uh, serious prayer requests there. The Malberg family. Um, many people with the COVID. Uh, also, Kimberly Martin, uh, Ricky Rogers, uh, Catherine Sarson, Mike, uh, John Boer, I'm sorry, John Boer, also uh, Ron Brashler, uh, Valerie Jorgensen, Tiffany, and Joseph and Kelly, and Jerry and Linda Muchow, also for Josh Bozeman, also for Pam Beyer, Robert Cole, um, Sheila Jewell, Lord, praying for her tonight. Also Jim Queen, uh, I understand doing well. What a miracle. Rose Younger. <clears throat> The Baker family, Nancy Willis, Diana Labonte, also for Brandon Baldwin, Mary Jo Thompson, David Proctor, uh, Antonio Lyle, Anita Baldo's mom with uh, the chemo, Maddie uh, Andressen, at 13 years old in the hospital, praying for her, also for Bobby and Sierra McClure. Bailey and Cole Groves, the father, uh, and all those that have virus, remembering Bill Corey, Dave Beam, and Debbie Roberts. Again, mentioning Ed Roberts, praying for him. Linda Parr. And the passing of a friend of ours, Tom Stamp. Uh, we thank you for Tom and his life, and we pray your blessing on him. Also, the passing of Bill Bott, uh, who passed away last week. We pray for that, those families. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we do pray for all these people. We pray your blessings, and we pray that uh, you continue to do great things in our lives, and it's so nice to see so many people 
that have been healed of this and that and doing well. And uh, we just pray uh, your richest blessings um, this week and on church this coming Sunday. We're thankful that we've never had to close our doors. Uh, we've been open every Sunday since the COVID hit. Uh, at one time we were having uh, our meeting outside, but that was a blessing. And we're thankful, Lord Jesus, for your blessings on us. In your name we ask these things. Lord Jesus, amen. I want to tell you I'm just having a great time tonight. I'm just enjoying the Lord. It sure is fun to be saved and uh, watch God's hand and everything. We need to set back. Don't be anxious. Let him take control. Amen? And we've, uh, with Donna's sister, it's been a struggle, claustrophobic a little bit for me at the beginning. But I realize now that uh, maybe God wanted her with us, even though she couldn't walk. And two broken shoulders. I mean, it's sort of hard to deal with her. But the blessing is we had a wonderful uh, physical therapist come into our home who we have become real good friends with, and he's really been trying to help her and teach us. And I'm learning a whole lot at this age. And uh, I thought I knew it all, but I realized there's some things I just don't know. (laughs) But... um, uh, he has been a joy, and uh, we see Dodie starting to walk again, which is a part of the battle that we uh, did not understand at first, but she's doing real well. And, uh, and even though she has a touch of dementia, uh, she has not lost her personality or anything at all. Um, she and Donna have so much fun together. It's, it's just a joy to watch them. And uh, so I've written a new uh, uh, rap song. Uh, Jim, uh, Bice, you want to come up and help me with this? No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Yo, is that the way they start? Again, I said that Sunday. Let your light shine. Don't be blind. Do you mind? It's mine on the line. Don't worry. I'll be fine. Yo. Let's be kind. Don't you whine. I'm not blind. You'll be fine. Yo, let your light so shine. Did you get that? Do you want me to repeat it? No. (laughs) What if this year we stop looking back and start looking ahead? Amen. Look forward to his return. He's coming back. I like uh, Hebrews 12, 2. I have a couple more minutes. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand uh, of the throne of God. Despising the shame, enduring the cross. Uh, what he saw there, looking unto him. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. What if this year of new beginnings, you go all out for him? That's what we need to be doing. Amen? Uh, Now, Satan may have blindsided you in round one, but we're in a new year. We're in round two. Can I get an amen? Amen. Listen. Listen. We are more wise now to his schemes and his tricks. Amen. Point number two, this is my micro mini message. I have three minutes. What if this year your prayers are answered? Acts 4.31, and when they prayed, the place was shaken. I like that, don't you? What if this year... Some of your children would get right with God. What if this year your spouse would come to know the Lord? The year maybe you conquer your old negative attitudes. That would be a blessing. The year you get all your bills paid. Can I get an amen? The year God restores your health. 
I've heard some good stories here tonight even about health. Maybe your marriage. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. Amen? All right. And uh, let's see. I like this story when I think of prayer. The Mayo brothers, uh, Dr. Will Mayo said this, I have seen patients that were dead by all standards. We knew they would not live and could not live. Whoops. Sorry, Mr. Bill. And uh, he goes on to say, but I have seen a minister come to the bedside and do something for him that I could not do. Although I have done everything in my professional power, but something touched the immortal spark in him. And in defiance of medical knowledge and materialistic common sense, the patient lived. The Mayo brothers, doctors Will and Charles, were founders of the world-famed Mayo Clinic. You know, when I think of that clinic, I think of uh, it was founded because of a, I believe it was a, tor uh, not a tornado, but a, a tornado? Yeah, that's what hit Laurel, I mean, uh, uh, Upper, uh, let's see, I'm trying to say Upper Marlboro. That's what hit La Plata back in 02, right? A big tornado. Well, I believe it was a tornado that hit uh, there and that area where the, uh, the Mayo brothers were practicing and, uh, and they worked diligently trying to help people. And um, it was the worst thing that had ever happened. Uh, in America at that time. But uh, several people got together and funded the building of the Mayo Clinic. And they say now that the thing that was the worst thing that ever happened, this tornado that destroyed thousands of lives and wrecked many people's physically, because of the Mayo Clinic, was actually the best thing that ever happened. That tornado was the best thing that ever happened to them in that area. Because of the hundred, I think there's 500,000 people go through that clinic every year. It's amazing. God is in control, amen? What a God we serve. I have one minute left. What if this year is a year of spiritual fruit for you? What if this year Revival would make this year an amazing year for you. Uh, what a God we serve. I'm looking forward to this year and what he's going to do with us. How about you? Let's stay strong, stay in the word. People are still looking for that emptiness to be filled in their lives. I talked to a young girl night before last who had been into drugs, and uh, I gave her some simple verses from Philippians. I told her, this is your homework assignment, and I gave her to read the book of Philippians. It's called the Joy Book. And I gave her some of the verses out of it, and it touched my heart because she started to weep. Just hearing the word of God, she's been 10 days without drugs. And I do believe, and her mom's been over 100, and her mom's fiancé has been over 100 days without drugs. And God is working. And uh, let's see God do something great this year. Bill, come on up. No, I'm fine. Okay. I, I, I want to hear about uh, King David. I don't know him personally, but I'm looking forward to hearing. Good evening, Fellowship Church. Deciding what to start on, had the desire to go to the Old Testament and get into a biography, one of the characters, and chose the person that the most writing in Scripture besides the Lord Jesus Christ is King David. So we're going to talk 
for seven weeks on the life of King David, and I'll take out of that life seven extreme lessons from his rise, his fall, and his recovery. The first four will be on his rise, which we should focus on, and we can learn a lot. As Romans 15.4 says, the scriptures that were written aforetime or in the Old Testament are for our learning. We can learn from others' experiences, our own, those we're close with, but also from the scripture. And then the fifth one will be his fall. We'll look at his fall. Then the sixth will be his recovery. And then the seventh will tie it all together. We'll look at what the New Testament says about King David. Because it says the sure mercies of David, raising the tabernacles of David, his seed. Uh, different terms and how to understand them. So as we go over this, we get the content about David's life. And I, I hope that this will help you interpret this content that we can apply it in our own lives. Practical. So the first one is humility and work. Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 16. And this is going to be the beginning of David's life we'll start out with as he's a shepherd and a king. So chapter 16. Before we get there, I like a little introduction or overview. I like making graphs, so I understand it clearly and how to explain it. The extreme lessons, there's more than seven. There could be 40, 50, 60, 70. There's so much written about King David. We'll start with his birth. Psalm 51, he says, I've been born in iniquity. And that was his psalm of repentance. And I believe how God had mercy on him. And why? Because he says that I want a person, not the outward appearance, but from the heart that loves me. And we'll get into that in his calling. Then he's privately anointed by Samuel, who is the uh, main prophet, main character up to this point, when he's around 12 years old. 12 to 15, I say 12 for certain reasons I'll tell you later. Then he grows through the young man, then he's king of Judah at 30, king of Israel, then his death. He lived 70 years. In his timeline, we get the green is his rise, things to learn from. If we want to rise, there's spiritual principles or laws or lessons, I say, that we can learn from his life that are applicable to us today. Because God has not changed, and they're written for a purpose. As a shepherd, a musician, a psalmist, a soldier, a king, although we aren't kings, but in a sense we are, we're a royal priesthood in the New Testament. And we all have something even better than King David had through the Holy Spirit in us that will not leave once we're saved. Then we'll look at the trials next week and his pride and sin, consequences of his pride and sin, and then how he continued on even in his deathbed. He was doing the right thing. How he got through it all, and we see uh, the New Testament terms. So that's all I'm going to cover there. We'll look at growth and sin. And I'll finish right here. Let's go through verses 1 to 13. And his, the two things we'll be looking at again is humility and work. There's a reason why I say work, labor, physical work, work that actually, as a shepherd, he was a shepherd. That was his job, even as a child. Okay. Let's start with verses 1. As we go through these verses, there's going to be five contrasts. And we'll look at first the life of Samuel, the prophet. 
because we need anointed leaders such as Samuel that can discern God's will in his time. And we'll see these five contrasts when he was sent to Bethlehem to privately anoint a king. Verse 1. And the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? He was mourning for Saul because Saul, just chapter 15, the end of it, he, he passed the line of no return. His life, his relationship with God is finished. Saul was saved, yes, but he passed the line of no return that God judged him and his life is going to end. He just cut up Agag, a king that Saul had mercy on, thought he would favor another king or whatever his reasons, uh, but Samuel just did something that hmm, everybody knew about. We'll see about that later too. He said, I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. So rejection. Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. So we see God re rejecting one and providing something to replace what he's rejected as a king. And God does that. He rises up and lowers kings. And he'll accomplish his will with or without us. And we really, I really want to be part of it, and I believe each one of us, we want to be part of his will. Know it and do it. Well, Samuel understood this. Verse 2 and 3, And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of this, he will kill me. He feared Saul. He knew his condition, his mental, emotional condition. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you. So he, didn't, he had a good relationship with the Lord, always here. He's going to kill me if I go. So what's he's, God going to give him? He's talking, but he's praying. Back and forth with God, a conversation. God's going to give him wisdom what to do. And that's what we need, that wisdom, when the, especially in difficult circumstances. We know we're going against something in this world, person, or situation. Take a heifer with you and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint to me him whom I name to you. So we see fear He's going to kill me, replaced by what? Faith. Faith because with wisdom from above, paying attention to the news, what's happening, but not too much, <laughs> just so we can keep in touch, he knew what was happening with Saul. So that's the second contrast we see from the, the leader. The next is verses 4 to 7. And Samuel did that which the Lord spoke. Now, the Lord speaking to us, if we're prophets or not today, well, let's see, I'd like to take a quote from this guy called F.B. Meyer. I don't know if anyone's heard of him. He's a Baptist evangelist, lived in the early 1900s. And from his book, I got the idea of covering King David but I haven't taken his stuff, only the idea. But here's a quote from him, which I really, really liked. Impressions within, from our heart, in our mind, and his word without, the Bible's outside of us, it's not within us, except his word is, as we get into it, are always corroborated or aligned with by his providence. Providence is God's will over individual circumstances, lives, areas, times. And we should quietly wait until these three focus into one point. Waiting on the Lord is a great uh, attribute, precious, when we can be patient, waiting on the Lord, then knowing when, yes, Lord, I hear you, Within, I hear you in your word, 
circumstances, providence uh, line up into one. That is, goes into um, knowing the Lord's will. And I'm sure that Samuel did this very well, and many do. <clears throat> and the elders of the town, when Samuel came there, verse 4, they trembled at his coming. They were afraid because he was a powerful person as far as if you weren't right with the Lord, such as the king he just cut up into pieces, um, you're going to see God work through him to, for just judgment. And they said, do you come here peaceably? And he said, peaceably, I come. So they were greatly relieved. I am come to sacrifice to the Lord, a sacrifice, an animal sacrifice, the heifer he's going to take. Sanctify yourself, set yourself apart. You notice he's going with the elders, those that are the mature, the leaders in the community. And come with me to sacrifice. So he's inviting them to come. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely this is the anointed before him. So Eliab's the oldest. But the Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man sees, for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So, first one's down, first son, out of seven. Then Jesse called, eight, verses 8 through 11, Abinab, and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shaman to pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this. And Jesse made his seven sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. So seven sons. Three of them he names. Later on, when King David fights Goliath in chapter 17, He's going to name the same three sons that are in the military. How old you got to be in the military of Israel? Written back in the law, it's 20 years old. So we know three of his brothers, of the seven, are 20 or over. And I imagine maybe they're only a year apart. But I really don't know, but they're 20 or over. The other ones are not. But David's the youngest. So that shows me that his age, where he could have been 12 when he was anointed and maybe 15 when he fought Goliath. That's a young age. <laughs> yes? Maybe you can look it up and practice for next next uh, at two weeks. <laughs> sure. <laughs> then Jesse called Abinadab. Wait, where are we? We're on verse seven sons of the youngest. Okay, this is it. Verse 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are all your children here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest. He was also the shortest, not that he was always a runt, but the youngest and shortest, 12 years old. And behold, he keeps the sheep. Now, as we look at that, he keeps the sheep, that's his job. He's out in the field alone doing his job responsibly, learning, um, doing it well with excellence. He's out in nature seeing all that he later describes in all his psalms. And we're going to look at two psalms that talk of 
this passage here that we're covering tonight that are written 40 years later with Psalm 78 and Psalm 89, just a few passages from there. He keeps a sheep, and Samuel said to Jesse, Set him, send him, fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come here to eat. So they make the sacrifice and they partake of it uh, and eat together. But we're not even going to sit down till you get him. Go out to the field, go out to the sheepfold and get him. We see two other contrasts, the outward versus the inward from the heart, and then the oldest versus the youngest. Verse 12 and 13, and he sent him and brought him in. He was ruddy and with a beautiful countenance and goodly look to look to. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. Arise and anoint him. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went back home to Ramah. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. That anointing that he had then, I propose that this is the same anointing we all have in the New Testament. 1 John 2.27, we're anointed in that anointing shall, of the Spirit that shall teach us all things. And I'll say the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. That is like when we're born again, first saved. Although he had a much better youth, more, I would say, pure than I had, and maybe some of you, before you came to Christ. I, his family knew the law of Moses. They were obedient to the law. They were doing right and good. His father, they were raising them right. He experienced all that in his youth. After he was anointed, the power and spirit, I believe that's when he defended the flock against a lion and a bear with his bare hands. He became this really, and he, he talked later of this when he went to fight with Goliath in chapter 17. The Spirit came upon him, and we'll just go to verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Again, he takes from one and gives to another, gives to one and takes from another. As a king, there's only one king. Now it's a king that God has chosen, not the king man has chosen. So we've got to be careful that we... Don't follow someone that man has chosen. We want the person that God has chosen and anointed. From that day, let's look at Psalm. Well, I won't turn it to Psalm 89. Now I'm going to just do the verses 19 and 20, which will help us understand King David. Because in this Psalm 89, just the verse 19 and 20 talk of this time in David's life with Samuel. So it says, Then you spoke in a vision to your Holy One, who is Samuel, and said, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant with my holy oil. I have anointed him. That's the Lord speaking through the psalmist whose name is Ethan. He wrote one, one psalm. Ethan lived the time of Rehoboam when the kingdom was divided after Solomon. So this is 40 years after David at the end of his life. He mentions God's faithfulness and mercy three times in this psalm. Read it all. But even, I think, more significant for the New Testament, he mentions David's a promise, a covenant God made with the seed of David, 
who is Jesus Christ. A never-ending promise. And also to the throne of David. For the nation Israel. So David was chosen for that purpose even more than the life he lived, but also is the promise of God to him for his seed and for the throne that was never to be, um, was to be fulfilled even after David died, which hasn't been completed yet. We're still waiting for that. And the city of David, which is also Jerusalem. So that's Psalm 78, and it goes in talking about his loving kindness in the thousand-year reign. If you look at the context, Israel hasn't experienced this yet. They rejected Christ when he came. So you learn in the book of Acts and the, the, the Gospels. So this is all to come, that thousand-year reign, when it will be fulfilled ultimately. And then, that goes along with verse 1 of 16, chapter 16. Then, 78, Psalm 78, what verses do I have there? 80, one verse. There it speaks of the wonderful works of God from the time in the wilderness, the delivery of, with Moses, under Moses, of the children of Israel, all the miracles that God did in history. And I think this is what they spoke out of Acts, too, as we see in the messages when they go over the history as a nation, how God worked mightily. And to think, think of your own life. How has God worked in your personal life? God worked in a nation then, but today he works in individuals. And I can think of hundreds of times when God has helped or been obvious, such as when we was younger and looking for a home to live because my job changed and how God opened the doors. Wonderful works of God. We each have wonderful works that he's done in our lives that we can uh, praise him for and we can proclaim and uh, brag about even. So verse 80, chapter 78, after he tells all this history, the times of King David, and he chose David and his servant and took him from the sheepfolds. It's verse 70. From following the ewes great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart. It's from the heart. We can tell when we're, we do it ourselves. From the heart is unto the Lord. And that's what we learn from King David in his rise. And he guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. We knew he was a great warrior, a, uh, a leader in the military, the army. Well, this is the humility that is a shepherd, and then his work, the, the extreme lessons we can learn and apply to our own lives. Whatever God's called us from in our past, he's called us to, well, we need that humility for God to work in us, to even first when we need to be broken so that we call upon him to be saved at first. And the Spirit of God enters us and doesn't leave. Although we may feel like the Spirit's left if we sin. If we, and we'll get into that later because sin doesn't happen overnight. It starts little and it grows if we let it in our lives. But that's for later. This is the rise of King David. In two weeks... We'll go to 1 Samuel 21 and 22, and we're going to see where he's almost gone, the trials, things that you feel like the Lord isn't there with you, but still you go forward, continue on. We'll see what David went through in chapters 21 and 22, and 
make some comparisons how we can apply that to our own lives today. So are there any thoughts, discussion on the big, yes? Well, here's what, what I was thinking with that. I believe he wrote Psalm 23 then. Yes, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I believe he wrote many of his psalms then, because right after that, he goes as a musician to Saul to comfort him, because he was troubled, his spirit, as we see later on in chapter 16. So I believe he, out in nature, looking at the stars in the night and just his duty, his work, in his regular daily work, that's when he wrote a lot of his songs. During the first part of his rise, but later on too. Because the enemy wasn't here yet. Who is Saul or the Philistines? Yes, Jim? Yes, it speaks to the emotions, and he was in nature with God in a tremendous way. And that it, those experiences he went through, we see later on expressed. He also spent a lot of time in the sanctuary. Well, later, later. We're just starting out in his life. <laughs> he had a good foundation here. It could have been up to, right, right, oh yeah, he was, the spirit was upon him from 12, and that's the age of a uh, Israelite, a Jew today, they say you're a man, that's when Jesus was teaching the doctors of the law in the temple when he was 12 years old, so it kind of aligns. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's very mature for his age, <laughs> totally, <laughs> yes, Yeah, self-employed business, small business person, yes. <laughs> or a farmer, they, they go through the same, more independent worker, yes. So we in the, get a lot out of, uh, and we'll be tracing through each stage that we go through these seven lessons, the correlating psalm that it's spoken of. So his life was so impressive, 40 years later, he's talking of the psalmist, of King David. <laughs> uh, that this is, um, it's a great blessing to get into the word and may the Lord bless us as we do in this year 2022. For me personally, it's the year of the new bottle. And the bottle is my body, my mind. I am accountable to myself, to God first, with my own self, then my wife and family and others. And then that, that, New body, well, I'd say the, has a uh, new wine. <laughs> or I shouldn't say new body, new bottle has new wine in it. And that's a daily thing to get, start the morning in prayer and the word to get the wine into you. And then be, stay filled. <laughs> don't, don't leak out too much. But even more than just filled, overflowing. That's the joy of the Lord upon our lives and our daily walk. However simple and whatever it seems like, in God's eyes, 
he knows each one of us. And his love is amazing. And that we may love him back with some of his love and more and more. While we have health or no health, while we have prosperity or poorness, whether we have much or little, as Paul, whether we're in prison or free, we'll be always content in the Lord. Oh, Pastor Marvin. I'll never twist it or side of the head. <laughs> Yes, and he knows each one of us, and that, that's wonderful. So are we meeting tomorrow at the, I'll say before the last prayer, Bob, Bob, Bob Evans, 830, come if you can, and for sure Sunday, uh, pray towards the Lord's Day, is, is we want this to be a year of personal revival, and the more people individually that are revived, that contributes to a local church being revived, and God working in us personally, in the local church, in our area. That he'll be the one that draws them in and helps us to grow in Christ, to disciple others, and these type of things. All right, let's pray. Lord God, we do thank you for your grace and mercies for this uh, time together in your house is called out ones. You may speak to our hearts wherever we are, in our walk, in our, that you may be glorified. We pray for the, the Jude house, the ones there that are, your hand still that is upon there would help them and to come to Christ, to grow in Christ. But here in Southern Maryland through the SMCA, Prepare the way for uh, this Sunday as we come together that your spirit may be uh, upon us because it's really upon us every day all the time. But we may or may not that we realize it in, in, our, in our personal walks. And we, we come to church filled with your spirit and just ready to uh, be a blessing to others to, according to how you formed us from our mother's womb. As we take our delight in you, that you give us the desires of our heart. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen.